Three months ago, 23-year-old Jordan arrived at Generate Hope, a San Diego home for victims of sex trafficking. She's recovering now from almost six years of forced prostitution on the streets of Northern California. But she still remembers the moment things went wrong. She was looking for a job, and a friend introduced her to a man who said he could help. A man she's still afraid of, which is why she's asked us to only use her first name. I just said, I, I got some work for you to do, and so I think going with him thinking it was just, I don't know, going to be some little chores or whatever, it ended up where he was like, you know, I need you to go on the corner and you're going to be making this quota for me and um, you're going to do it or I'm going to hurt you. I mean, that's how he kept me in line was making threats and beating me up and um, raping me that it made um, where I was too scared to leave. And I was 18 the first time um, that I had um, turned my first trick with somebody and, and it's been, it was a trap ever since. Something I felt like I couldn't get out of. Stories like Jordan's are the reason behind Proposition 35 on the November ballot. The proposition would impose tougher penalties on human traffickers, those who force people into sex work or other forced labor for their own financial gain. If passed, Prop 35 would increase prison terms for trafficking from 5 to 8 years to 12 years to life. And it would also increase fines for convicted traffickers from $100,000 to up to $1.5 million, money that would go to fund programs that help trafficking victims recover. The proposition would also classify the production of child pornography as sex trafficking, and it would require convicted sex traffickers to register as sex offenders. The proposition has broad support among law enforcement officials, Democrats and Republicans, and many victims' advocacy groups across the state. It's a heinous crime. It's um, horrible what happens to the girls. It changes their lives in ways that um, they're very difficult to heal from. Susan Muncy is the director of Generate Hope, the victim's home where 23-year-old Jordan is recovering. There are three cities in um, California that are, have already been identified by the FBI as um, high-intensity areas for commercial sexu sexual exploitation of children, and San Diego being um, one of those. I think this initiative can move us in the other direction and um, really put some teeth into the laws. Prop 35's chief architect is a Bay Area victims advocate named Daphne Fung, and its main funder is former Facebook executive Chris Kelly. He's donated nearly $2 million to the Yes on 35 campaign. The proposition has little organized opposition, but some attorneys, advocates, and researchers say it is flawed. Stephen Munkhild is a defense attorney who testified in Sacramento. Sometimes just punishment, just imposing penalties isn't the most effective way to address a problem. Amy Carpenter is a University of San Diego professor who researches human trafficking, and she agrees. It's based on a presumption that more arrests and stiffer penalties are going to decrease the level of, of trafficking. Um, what we've found in San Diego works is a, a comprehensive approach where you have you have law enforcement um, and you, you have trained law enforcement, which Prop 35 provides for, but you also have victim services providers at the table, you have community members. Major newspapers, including the LA Times, have opposed Prop 35, saying current penalties for trafficking are sufficient. Even San Diego District Attorney Bonnie Dumanis has concerns, saying Prop 35 could actually make it harder to save victims from their pimps. The proposition would no longer allow prosecution of people forced into prostitution, but some prosecutors say that's sometimes the only way to free them from their pimps and get them help. But Brian Marvel, president of the San Diego Police Officers Union, says Prop 35 would help victims by requiring police officers to get training on how to identify them. So this is just really on the cusp of opening it up and, and giving the officers the education so they can eas more easily identify that this is a uh, human trafficking victim. Jordan says the proposition would help her in one more way. She eventually wants to press charges against her pimp, but says many young women like her are afraid to because they fear revenge when the prison term is over. At least with my pimp, like, um, you know, if I had reported him, he, he, he's going to know it was me.